few months ago, we had to close a parish in Lakewood, St. Gregory's. And in the attic of the, of the rectory was this representation of the San Damiano cross. The cross before which St. Francis of Assisi was praying and he heard Jesus speak to him through that cross. And Jesus said to him, Francis, build my church. Dr. Lutz reminded me of that story. And I said, purely coincidence. But in fact, we are here in this post-festive season of the Holy Cross, the Feast of the Holy Cross. And so we thought that it would be very appropriate to have that, uh, this image. Jesus speaking to us. This is hard to imagine, to accept, that God would actually talk to us, to tell us what we need to know. There are atheists who don't believe in God at all. And there are agnostics who believe that there may be a God, but he really doesn't have any connection with the world. And therefore, there may as well not be a God. But we, Christians, realize this relationship with God. And that is what we're here for to acknowledge that relationship and to call upon it, to allow him to show us the way. I was reading a uh, magazine, a journal, from an organization called Communion and Liberation, called, the magazine's called Traces. And uh, it was an interview of a Ukrainian Orthodox uh, philosopher. And in that interview, he reminded us that, you know, no one has ever seen his own face. Think about it. You have never seen your own face. We see reflections in mirrors. When we look into a pond of water, we certainly see a reflection of ours. And if there are imperfections in the mirror, waves in the pond, our reflection is imperfect as well. And so sometimes we ask somebody else who can look at us. I know I often ask people, how's my hair? <laughs> you know? But in truth, you know, what is my face? We know as the eparchy of Parma, we can't see ourselves directly either. Oh, we can see each other and we can see those who seem to be different than we are. And we can compare ourselves one against another, but we can't see the whole. I'm reminded of a story that Garrison Keillor told about his hometown celebration of the 4th of July. It seems that someone, someone went out and bought either a red, a white, or a blue hat for all the people in the town. And he had them come together and stand in certain way so that from above it looked like an American flag. The problem was nobody could see it. And so they took turns going up onto the bell tower <laughs> to see an imperfect flag because they weren't in it. 
secular society wants to tell us a lot about ourselves that simply is untrue. Many people speak truths that are not complete. And so we ask, who are we to trust? We turn to him who knows our face, the only one we can really trust in this matter, God himself. For he is the one who created the church, and he is the goal of that church. How can we know who we are and what we are to do? We turn to God and remind ourselves first of who he is. If we're to be a reflection of this God, as Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And the first book of the Bible teaches us that we were made in the image and likeness of God. We are to be his body, Jesus tells us. Well, if we're to be his body, if we're to be an image and likeness of him, who is he? And so at this conference, we're going to consider who is really God and how does that teach us who we are? Once we have understood this, we can start to look at a how. The church is for the whole world and for the whole of time. We, this small eparchy of Parma, do not have the responsibility of the whole world. And we, in 2013, don't have the responsibility for the ages. But we do have a responsibility for this place and this time. So we ask how best to be church for the 12 state regions entrusted to us in the 21st century. What are the challenges? Obvious and not so obvious. How does our Byzantine Catholic nature give us the wherewithal to do this? This is why we are here, to start anew, as we have so many times before, to address the moment, to know what God wants of us here and now. We need to know who we really are if we are ready to face the present and the future. We're here to let God tell us what our face looks like. And if he needs to rub out a spot of dirt like mother used to do, <laughs> he'll do it and we'll let him. We're here to let God tell us how the church he created can respond to today's challenges. We're going to begin, as Father Dennis said, with some witnesses, some people who can perhaps reflect some of our own experiences in how and why we're here today why we're part of this church. I myself come from a father who was Byzantine Catholic and a mother who was Latin right. And mother was a little bit stronger in the faith and so we spent almost all of our time in the Latin church. But we had that regular opportunity to be reminded of the other. We were definitely a very Slavic family. Uh, Rusin, Slovak, and my mother's family were Slovenian. And so we had that sense of the, the Slavic sense, the Slavic soul, if you will. 
So when I was in the seven, well, I went to college and uh, before college I, I questioned, do I want to be a teacher or do I want to be a priest? And I decided that I'd rather be a teacher. So I went to college to be a teacher and ended up at a Franciscan college, St. Francis College, now university, where the third order regular Franciscans teach. And I saw these Franciscan priests teaching. I thought, whoa, you know, all of a sudden I can have the best of both worlds. And so I joined the Franciscans. And in the course of seminary, we had opportunity to have uh, Byzantine liturgy at the seminary. Father Bernard Siegel was one of our professors. And uh, he taught both at our seminary and the Byzantine Catholic Seminary in Pittsburgh. But uh, it was the visiting of a Byzantine Catholic parish close by that kind of got me started in thinking about it. But I, I'm sorry, I, I got a little ahead of myself. While I was there at the college, I had already decided that I wanted to be a Franciscan. I wanted to be a priest, you know. And, uh, but I didn't know for sure. And I didn't know if I had the courage to do it. And so I went to a, a uh, retreat, a one-day retreat that the college was putting on. And part of the retreat, or one experience of the retreat, was a uh, film strip. Some of you remember film strips. <laughs> There's something about a film strip that <laughs> videos don't do. <laughs> it would put up a, a, an image on the screen and keep it there. So this film strip was on the Shroud of Turan. And this image came up on the screen. On the left is the actual cloth, and on the right was this mirror image, this uh, negative image. And I started looking at that, and I thought, how can you turn him down? I felt like he was calling me. And I thought, wow, yeah, that image, that face that he never saw, but I could see. And then, like I say, I went to a, a neighboring parish, uh, in Nanticlo, Pennsylvania. And the Pantocrator, the ceiling really didn't allow for the Pant Pantocrator in the center dome. There was no dome. So they put it up in the highest point of the church, which is in the front. And this was the one. It was painted by a, a very holy man. And boy, you just look at that and you think, wow. I'm not going to deny him. <laughs> and so in time, after teaching a while, I uh, went there as the pastor. So while I was there as pastor, not only this icon, but the icons on the iconostas and some other things really were powerful for me. They spoke to me carefully. And I thought, one time, okay, I was teaching full-time, running the computer services at the university, but evenings were parish time. And uh, so I decided to do a coloring book for the children. So I took these icons. We took pictures of all the icons. I put them on a uh, tracing board, and I traced drawings for this coloring book. And while I was doing that, you couldn't help but stare at it 
for long periods of time. And again, I could hear God speaking to me through this image. This image that my poor artistic abilities could never capture. And I thought, let the children fill it in for us. Sometime later, I saw I was in a store, a religious store, and I saw this drawing. Uh, it was actually laser printed onto a metal plate. And I saw it, I thought, wow. I thought, you know, if I want Christ to speak to me, this can do it. So I bought it. I've since given it away, but not before I made a Xerox copy of it. <laughs> so I have that above my monitor of my computer. And I find that particularly helpful, especially when I have to write the voice of the shepherd <laughs> that comes every three weeks. <laughs> and, but what good is in that is not me. And what is boring and is me. <laughs> but it is this. The Eastern Byzantine Church, I believe, has allowed me to experience this. And so I believe that we need to use our Byzantine Church to cooperate with the other Catholic churches, that it is, this is something that is not an option for us. This is something that God expects of us. So he is speaking to you. If you stare at his eyes, let him speak to you. If you look at this icon here, let him say to you, build my church.